What's your vision for the future of AI Island? So we're trying to help a million people become literate with AI. Also, there's some challenges around AI. It's making people aware of them. What's one piece of advice you'd give to someone just starting their journey in the AI field? Start small, try to solve a problem, move closer to solving bigger problems, and then spend time with people that are incredibly smart. Are you going to ask me more questions, Copilot? No problem, okay. As the founder of AI Island, how do you feel the podcast has grown since its inception? How do you think the podcast has evolved since its beginning? So if you think about it, when I first started this podcast, I just had my phone and a lapel mic and my bicycle. So I just started to cycle around people, interviewing them, asking them, is AI hype? Is it not? What can it solve? What can it do? And I would kind of low expectations. I was trying to figure out if I should start a business in the world of staffing. And by interviewing people, I kind of got to figure to say, okay, this is a, a market I should go after. This is worthwhile. But I didn't necessarily know what AI Ireland would be, what the AI awards would be. I didn't think we'd have 650 applied applications. I didn't think we'd have thousands of people who've been involved in the community. I didn't think we'd have seven award ceremonies. I didn't think we'd have ChatGPT. I didn't have any of this perspective. And a lot of people say to me, oh my God, you're so you were thinking so far ahead and it's really worked out so well. But I, I wasn't thinking that far ahead. I was literally thinking maybe a year ahead, will I, when I hand in my notice, will I have a, a job that I'll be able to actually you know, put food on the table. So there was just kind of more, it was more day-to-day -day kind of trivial kind of concerns that I was thinking about. And then you had aspirations for the future, but you didn't necessarily know what it would actually be. And now to be talking to, uh, you know, an AI-powered model like yourself, Copilot, uh, it's just a complete, this is mad. Your journey reflects an organic and ambitious spirit. From humble beginnings, you've built a robust community and seen AI Island surpass your early expectations. So, with that in mind, what's your vision for the future of AI Island? So, we're trying to help a million people become literate with AI. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to have a PhD in AI. It's just It means you need to understand the pros, the cons, but ultimately how the technology can be used to help people to be you know, more productive. Also, there's some challenges around AI. It's making people aware of them. And also, we believe that if people are literate, they're going to feel more part of the journey and less people will be isolated. And that, that's our goal, is to try to share those different kind of key trends, key insights that are happening day to day. And then also, from a selfish perspective, I love bringing people together and meeting really interesting people. So that's, that's the aspiration. That's a powerful vision, Mark. Making AI accessible and inclusive while fostering community really sets the stage for meaningful impact. What's one key trend or insight in AI that excites you the most right now? Ooh, there's so many. Um, I think this kind of whole agentic AI piece is in incredibly exciting. The opportunities to just completely reimagine healthcare just blows my mind. Companies like Hippocratic AI, they've raised what, close to $116 billion and they are just doing some incredible ways to have like a, a, an AI as an extension of your doctor based on all your, your medical history. And then for a, a, a monthly sum that you're going to be paying, I just feel this is a, a, so exciting for, for what we can do to reimagine healthcare. Drug discoveries, uh, coming up with like the Mardina COVID vaccine in 48 hours. These kind of things for me make me feel like in maybe seven to 10 years, illnesses could be, I know it's a big if, but they could be actually like solved. And this, uh, we're all, we've all got skin in the game with that because we've all got loved ones that have got sick or have died, and to try to help that help those people would be really really good. From a business perspective, although I think from a market perspective AI is probably overhyped, from a business perspective I think is massively underhyped. The work and the value that you can bring. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible day to day for a small company, medium sized company to start to leverage this tool, these tools. Uh, there's never been a better time to be in business to utilize this. So I'm incredibly optimistic about what the future will bring. But I'm also quite guarded that I think if people aren't brought out the journey, they won't trust it. And if they don't trust it, people won't adopt it. Please give me 30 seconds of your time. 
It blows my mind that only 9% of listeners actually subscribe to our podcast. I'm going to ask you one favor. If you like and enjoy this podcast, please can you subscribe? That one thing will really, really help us and the team get you the very, very best guests. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Now, switching gears a bit, what's one piece of advice you'd give to someone just starting their journey in the AI field? I would say speak to customers, seeing if you're using the technology actually solves their problem. If it does, stay down that uh, track. You need to experiment, so don't get me wrong, but just be careful you stay away from the wouldn't it be cool snare projects. Start small, try to solve a problem, move closer to solving bigger problems, and then spend time with people that are incredibly smart. You're going to meet an awful lot of people at meetups, events, and get in front of people, get a recorder, use your phone, and start interviewing people, and that's where you'll start to learn and learn and learn. Um, and there's no stopping you then. Where do you think the AI Ireland podcast is headed in the future? So I want to have at least 50 episodes where our guests come on and specifically talk to us about how they're using AI every day to solve problems from kind of like little hacks. So that could be like summarization of documents, doing deep research, creating marketing brochures using Canva. Maybe it's using tools like um, Notebook LM to have avatars to talk you through how you'd use an employee handbook for solutions. It could be creating avatars to sell your products or services. I'm going to start to bring those kind of questions to life so people can start to see some really, really low-hanging fruit that people can start to use day-to-day for their business. And that, that actually really inspires me. So that's some of the stuff I'm going to look to do. That's a brilliant plan, Mark. Showcasing practical AI applications is bound to inspire listeners and provide tangible benefits. You're onto something really impactful. Ready for your fourth question? Yeah, you make me feel so special. Like nobody actually ever says things like that. Thank you for that. I'm really glad to hear that, Mark. You deserve all the recognition and your ideas are genuinely inspiring. So what's your personal favorite AI hack that you use in your daily life? Game changer for me was learning how to use a framework when you're using ChatGPT, Copilot, Perplexity Cloud, which is persona. So act as if context, giving the AI the context about what you look to try to achieve, command, giving it the command of what you want it to do, and then format, asking it to format the outcome, maybe such as a PDF, bite-sized LinkedIn post, Twitter post, wherever it might be. I love doing that. The other hack that I find very helpful is taking a transcript of a podcast episode, putting it to ChatGPT and saying, act as if you are a PR guru, you know how to write viral content, you're a neuroscientist with a real skill in creating incredible content, something like that. And I would then take three or five key insights that maybe I would not have seen from the episode from a different perspective and I'll look to kind of talk about those more rather than necessarily just me picking what I felt was the most interesting aspects. I'm getting a variety of different nuanced nuanced thoughts. I also love trying to do a time travel prompt where I go into the future 12 months and I ask AI to talk me through all the reasons why my strategy is going to fail on this subject. It gives wonderful different types of nuances that are uh, that are that are there. And then the other tool I love is Lovable, using it to create websites for like my parents, uh, creating demos on the fly. And um, the whole vibe coding for me just feels just like it's a change of step for businesses. So they they'll be the ones that come to mind straight away. What's been the most surprising thing you've learned from interviewing guests? how open people are to not knowing everything even though they're so incredibly smart and how humble 99 percent of the guests have been that's been an eye-opener where on paper i would have thought they were so clever and so successful that they may have a sense of arrogance but they didn't that was that was actually been really surprising that's a great observation it speaks volumes about the character of the people you've interviewed 
What do you think makes someone a truly insightful guest when discussing AI? Their ability to define the problem that they're looking to solve and then a relentless drive in actually solving that problem, coming up for air and then coming back to solve the problem and stepping away from one of the be cool snare projects, which so many people would have naturally fallen into, but they've got this relentless drive to do it. That makes sense. AI is such a rapidly evolving field. That focus drive is essential. On that note, what's the most important question you think people should be asking about the future of AI? How to use AI to be more productive and actually spending more time working on themselves rather than working on their job. Because if they work on themselves and be able to utilize AI more effectively, they'll actually naturally be better at their job anyway. So I suppose it depends on the job you're doing. But I could see the majority of people using AI will have a significant increase in AI. So I've completed over 750 interviews in the last decade or so with founders and AI leaders. There's a few different things I've learned from that. AI is the flowers that bake in their cake. And they've got a golden thread of where they're seeing AI being woven into the business and in, in industries that they're working in. So they don't see it as this kind of silo. They see it across everything that they're involved in. They're empowering their people to be supercharged with literacy. So they teach them how to use the tool, relevant use cases that are suitable for themselves. Then they upskill and then they continue to allow them to have time to spend with the tools. The second is the process. They're fanatical about actually optimizing their processes to be slicker and more refined. And that's for their customers and their own internal processes. And then the third is the product or the service. They're constantly thinking, how do I use AI to get closer to my customer, solving their problem, removing friction, and how do I give a better service internally as well? And then the fourth P that I think an awful lot about is the place or having time to play with the tools, time to be in a sandbox, time to actually experiment. This is very, very important because we're all in the hamster wheel, but these people seem to be very, very effective at creating that time. And then the fifth P is that proprietary data. So leveraging that data insights to making sure that you're actually saying, okay, we know all these key insights from our own business, our own customers. How do we start to leverage that as well? So using tools such as Otter AI to record your conversations, that's going to give you a transcript. Using tools such as Scribe, which is going to allow you to minimize the amount of clicks that you would work through on a, a setting up a website or creating a document. You can actually look at the different ways that you use your tools every day and screenshot them and actually refine how you do to get a really nice standing operating procedure. And then using tools such as Canva or using tools such as Notebook LM to reimagine how you're actually doing your daily tasks. But being focused on not having perfection, because if you're always striving for perfection, you're going to be very, very disappointed with AI because there's still so much left left to go. So my, my last piece of advice would be is spend more time with your customers, show them the demonstrations of the work that you're doing internally, show them how they can go on that journey as well. And that's going to be a really, really good place to, to build trust. And then I think be open to disrupting yourself. So if you can disrupt yourself and reimagine how you're working every day and think about going back to zero, ground zero, if you were to start out your journey again today, what would you do differently knowing that you have AI in your corner to help you out? And knowing that you've got AI in your corner to help you out, you can totally be like a phoenix from the flames. Like you can reimagine every single thing that you can do. And that brings me an awful lot of confidence for the future that we can build something incredible. But also the downsides, if we don't bring people with us on the journey, we're going to leave people behind. That was a surreal experience. Thank you, ChatGPT, Gemini, and Copilot. So my name is Mark Kelly, founder of AI Ireland. We're passionate about collaboration and sharing the incredible stories behind every AI journey. That's why we're always looking for guests to join our in-person AI Ireland podcast experience. If you're working on innovative AI projects or have a story that can inspire others, we want to hear from you. This is your chance to share your insights, experiences and ideas with a really vibrant community that's as excited about AI as you are. So if you're ready to be part of this conversation and help shape the future of AI in Ireland, please get in touch today. 
We can't wait to collaborate with you. Thank you.